So today is the day and we finally managed to get our hands on two very much anticipated running shoes from the Saucony brand. Uh, the first one we're taking a look at today is their new Tempo training shoe, the Endorphin Speed 3. Now I was a massive fan of the previous two versions of this shoe and I did lots of training miles and race miles in them, but there has been a few big changes this time around and I have to say it, I'm loving this new blue and yellow colour combination. I think the shoe looks amazing, but we all know we can't pick our running shoes on looks alone. So let's dive into the video and find out how the new Endorphin Speed performs. Welcome back everyone, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. It's great to have you back. It is First Impressions Day at the channel again and if this is the first time you've watched one of these videos, what we tend to do is give you a few facts and figures on a newly released running shoe like these blue bad boys and then we get them on our feet, get them laced up and we take them out for a run and put them through their paces. Obviously, we're a YouTube channel so we grab the cameras and we're going to be bringing you guys along for the ride. Uh, just before we dive into that, uh, if you have been enjoying the content, if you're enjoying the videos that we make, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's dead easy to do. Just click on that little red subscribe box down there in the corner only takes a second and it is completely free but it really helps the channel out but don't forget to hit that bell icon as well because then you won't miss out on any new exciting running content right back to the video and back to this rather good looking shoe so the endorphin speed 3 is sock in his neutral tempo training shoe so it's kind of been designed for all those quicker sessions you run throughout the week and it will quite happily cross over to a bit of racing action uh, it now retails in the UK for £165. Weight wise, comes in at 242 grams in a men's UK 9.5. We've got a 8mm heel offset, so we've got 36mm stack height under your heel and 28 under your forefoot. So a pretty hefty midsole there giving the runner a nice cushioned running experience. When it comes to the new construction, I think it's best if we start with the stuff that's pretty much stayed the same. When we compare it to the previous version, the Speed 2, uh, when I heard there was gonna be an update to the shoe, I did hear a few mutterings, a few rumors that the shoe was gonna go up in weight, which I have to be honest, I'm never a big fan of when a new model comes out and it's got heavier, especially when it's supposed to be a sort of lightweight performance training shoe. I'm glad to say I grabbed my Endorphin Speed 2s and the 3s, put them both on the scales, and they actually pretty much weigh identical weight. So happy to say there's been no weight increase. We've still got that great speed roll technology from Saucony worked into the midsole design. So that's gonna give you that nice sort of efficient rocker geometry. Happy to say that the midsole is still full power run PB construction. And this is Saucony's sort of performance-based compound. So it's designed to be lightweight, comfortable over distance, but also high energy returning. And it tends to be the cushioning of choice by the brand for their performance-driven running shoes. The outsole is still coated in Saucony's XT900 rubber, the same compound that was used on the Speed 2s, but we've got a slightly different layout this time round. Should still offer really good levels of traction and durability. They've made a few slight tweaks when it comes to that lightweight engineered upper. So we've got a good level of padding around the ankle and in the heel, especially for a performance shoe. Good structure in that heel cup. Uh, some nice perforations worked around the midfoot and across that toe box. And I think the biggest changes come when you take a closer look at the upper uh, is in the tongue design. So still gusseted, but there's definitely been a bit of padded removed. So it's a much thinner construction and it is a slightly stretchier material this time round. Uh, but all in all, there's just been made a few sort of slight adjustments when it comes to the upper. Moving on to one of the biggest changes when it comes to the new Speed 3s and it has to be the redesign of the nylon plate in the midsole. So yep, this is a plated running shoe. And you know, if you're new to the world of sort of plated performance shoes, then uh, most of the brands will go for sort of carbon and fiber as their material of choice, especially in their race day shoes. Uh, with the Endorphin Speed 3 sort of being aimed at those quicker training sessions, intervals, tempo runs, things like that, 
Socony have actually gone for the more forgiving nylon option. So the reimagined S-curve plate is now winged. And by that, I mean, it's got little wings that sort of wrap up around your midfoot. And if I hold the shoe up close to the camera, you can actually see that plate coming through the midsole design. Uh, Socony are hoping for a bit more propulsion from that new plate, but also a bit more midfoot structure. I personally think those changes to the plate are a really good idea because I saw a lot of runners using the Endorphin one and the two as their sort of daily training shoe, and it wasn't really designed for that in the first place. And this Power Run uh, deep stack midsole could be quite unstable at times. So by having that plate wrapping up around your midfoot, it should give the shoe a bit more substance and maybe make that midsole a bit more stable if you did want to use it as a daily trainer. But that's enough talking. I am so excited to get these on my feet and get running. You know, the updates to the endorphin range are always very much anticipated here at the channel. So without further ado, let's go running. Okay, so two and a half miles into the run so far. And I have to say, I think the 80 miles at Endure 24 and then running the 50K of the Serpent Trail two weeks later finally caught up with me this week. Uh, my legs were feeling pretty bad. I went and got a sports massage on Monday. And then come Tuesday, my legs felt proper, proper tight and heavy. I think it was where all them toxins were flushed down into the system. It can sometimes happen after a sports massage. I went for a run with the TNT crew in the evening and it was terrible. My legs were just not working right. It was definitely running slow, working hard. And, you know, I thought the best thing I could do was take the Wednesday off so I didn't ride with the boys. I got in the old Mayo pumps, flushed everything out, got on the rollers, massage gun, and I think it really, really helped. I also drank lots of water, which is definitely important. Out here running, two and a half miles in, the legs have come back to life. So happy days on the leg front. As far as the shoes, I think if someone had put a blindfold over my head and put this pair of shoes on my feet, I could have probably guessed it was the new pair of the Endorphin Speeds. It feels very similar to the previous version, which is definitely a good thing. You know, whenever a shoe's super popular or a shoe I love running in, I always cross my fingers when there's an update. But yep, yeah, I can happily tell you that these are feeling very, very much like the Endorphin Speed. So all good on the shoe front. We're going to try and run about seven or eight miles tonight. Depending on how the legs feel, I might go a bit further, but let's crack on with the run. You know what? It's been a long time since I put my pair of Endorphin Speed 2s on and took them for a run. It's been a really busy year, testing and reviewing shoes, road shoes and trail shoes. And I've also been sort of focusing my training on the trails because, you know, we've got TDS at UTMB coming up in August. And I just forgot what a great fun shoe it is to run in. That brilliant midsole of Power Run PB bouncing you along the road. And then you've got that awesome speed roll technology that really does push you along. It just feels so efficient, so easy to run in. And like with all the endorphin speed shoes, I find it quite hard to run slow in it, to be honest. But yeah, feeling great so far and good to be back in them. clocked up a good solid seven and a half miles so far and all I can say is it's great to have my legs back it's brilliant to be running a bit freer the training is definitely heading in the right direction you know after the miles at Endure 24 and the Serpent Trail 50k so happy that my body's recovered pretty quick and I'm back into training apart from Monday and Tuesday I've been feeling fine so yeah really really happy with that as far as that new engineered upper goes it is super comfy another Socony shoe that you know I've just taken straight out of the box gone running in it and had no issues 
uh, you know, there's not been one point on this run where I thought, oh, does that feel all right? Is that going to rub? Is that going to irritate? Am I slipping? I just feel really well locked in and dialed into the upper. And I actually think the midfoot on the Speed 3 is actually fitting me a little bit better than the Speed 2. I did have to pull that shoe in quite tight to get it to sort of hold my midfoot nice and tight. Whereas I'm not having to do it with this shoe at all. You can probably see on the camera, it is a beautiful evening down here in Cornwall. Uh, it's quite warm, but you know, love the heat, body's working well. And I think having all those perforations worked into the upper, working great when it comes to airflow. So the upper feels nice and breathable. I'm gonna probably do nine miles by the end of this run. So it's definitely been a good run back after the way my legs were feeling on Tuesday. So the only thing we haven't spoken about is the redesigned nylon plate in that midsole. So I think we should head back to the studio and then we'll break down the performance in a little bit more detail. Another solid nine miles in the legs and you know, it was only steady running, sort of eight minute mile in. I threw in a quicker mile there, about 6.30, 6.40 pace, just to see how the new shoe handled those quicker tempos. But it's so good to be back training more consistently now, especially after those two long efforts at Endure 24 and the Serpent Trail 50K. And it, it seems like forever since I've done anything like that. So everything is heading in the right direction and it is now full steam ahead to the TDA. We spoke out on the run about how I feel that new upper fits my foot shape a bit better, a bit more sort of locked down around the midfoot. We also talked about the performance of the Power Run PB midsole and the fact that it feels very endorphin speed like. But the only thing we need to discuss is that redesigned nylon plate in the midsole. Now, I know it's only my first run, but I have got a lot of miles in the previous two versions of the shoe. And I think that redesigned uh, plate in the midsole does change the performance of the shoe slightly. I think what Saucony were trying to achieve with the new Speed and the new Pro was to have two completely different shoes. So the Pro being super performance, and again, the speed being more of your sort of tempo training shoe. In the previous two versions, they were very similar shoes in construction and in feel. And the only real difference was a little bit of weight and the Pro had a carbon plate and the Speed had the nylon plate. So I think what happened was everybody just went for the Speed because you could train in it and it was also a nice, comfortable, lively race day shoe. And I think the Pros got kind of left behind. I haven't run in the new Pros yet, but it really does look like a completely different shoe when it comes to the design. And obviously it's got that carbon plate that is always had in it. But when it comes to that new wing design on the nylon plate, it does make the shoe feel and perform a bit different. It feels like it's got a bit more substance and support around the midfoot, you know, maybe a little bit stiffer as well. So if Saucony were trying to achieve a sort of fast trainer feel, then I think they've definitely achieved that objective but maybe it's just lost a little bit of excitement and performance when you compare it to the original Endorphin Speed or the Speed 2s. Don't get me wrong, it still felt really good to run in, but it maybe didn't have that pop that the previous two versions sort of gave me. You know, I'd put those shoes on and I'd get all excited and all I'd want to do is run quickly. And I actually ran a couple of 5K and 10K races in the original Endorphin Speed and the Endorphin Speed 2s. And I think they made a really good, comfortable, cushioned race day shoe. I'm not sure I'm getting the same sort of vibes from this yet. Like I said, it's our first run. It might take a bit of bedding in to soften up and to come alive. But uh, at the moment, it is feeling a little bit more trainer-like. Maybe I'm being a little bit hard on the shoe and with a few more miles, it will get softer. It will flex up and it'll get that sort of snappy feel back. Uh, there is one other thing that we need to speak about. And this is actually one of my pet hates when it comes to running shoes. And it is... Yep, we've got a stone trap. Can't quite believe I'm saying these words when it comes to the endorphin speed. And I just don't know how brands let this happen. Whenever I see these sort of grooves or recesses worked into an outsole of a running shoe, I hold my breath and hope that it isn't gonna pick up stones. And you can see, unfortunately, that is not the case with the new Endorphin Speed 3s. Perfect size for picking up those stones. Uh, they probably channeled that out just to save a little bit of weight. And to be honest, I, I didn't feel it on the run. It wasn't a problem on the run. It was only when I got home and I noticed that both outsoles had a stone stuck in them. So like I said, I don't understand why they do this because yes, it might save a bit of weight, but 
surely they can see that it could also cause a problem when it comes to picking up stones. Wrapping up, and I really did enjoy my first experience of the new Endorphin Speed 3. Uh, upper felt great, fitted my foot shape really well, super plus straight out the box, no issues when it comes to hot spots, rubbing, blisters, or anything like that. Like all Sockany shoes are feeling at the moment. Obviously that great Power Run PB midsole, and as efficient as ever with that Speed Roll technology. Uh, the jury is out um, when it comes to that redesigned nylon plate at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure the shoe should feel so trainer-like, especially when you think Sockany have just released the brilliant uh, Ride 15, a great lightweight daily trainer. So fingers crossed that it's going to take a few more miles to sort of bed it in, flex it up, and then it's going to spring back to life. So over the coming weeks, we're going to be getting more miles into them, and then we'll be back with our full in-depth review. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we got our hands on two of the exciting new endorphin shoes released by Sockany this year. So obviously the Speed 3s, but we've also got a pair of these bad boys. And yep, it is a men's shoe, and yes, it is bright pink. So this is Sockany's first ever carbon-plated trail shoe, the Endorphin Edge. Uh, you'll know uh, from my past videos that I've never been a big fan of carbon plates in trail running shoes, but you can see it's looking a bit dusty, so we've already taken it for its first outing, and I think you'll be very interested to hear what I've got to say about these. So there'll be a first impressions video of the Endorphin Edge coming to the channel soon. Don't forget guys, if you have enjoyed the video and you found it helpful to hit that like button, and it's always wicked when you get in the comments. So if you've got a pair of the new Endorphin Speed 3s, especially if you ran in the previous two versions, then let us know how it's performing for you in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel more, we've got a great range of uh, Run For Adventure merchandise at runforadventure.uk. It's definitely worth checking out. Or you could support us through our Patreon page for as little as two pounds a month. What that does is uh, help the channel out massively, obviously, but it also opens up a world of Run For Adventure perks. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. We will be back here very, very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. So the only thing we haven't really talked about is how <laughs> we spoke out on the run about how I feel that the new uh... <laughs> and we also spoke about how the new oh dear bed in and soften up as we put more miles into the shoe. Uh, I'm not sure. <sighs>